Hello dear viewers and welcome to Christianity Daily with Sister Rose Bijou. Until next time, be encouraged, be uplifted, and be blessed. Bye bye. Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to Christianity Daily with Sister Rose Bijou. Today, we will talk about how to be a true worshiper. I have with me my sister, Esperance Feiti. She will be with me in this session. What is worship, first of all? Worship is a feeling, of a feeling or expression of reverence and adoration to a higher ranking person or a higher power. The Webster's Dictionary states that worship is to honor with extravagance, extravagant love and extreme submission. So that is worship. The Bible states in the book of Philippians 2 verse 10, that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that the Lord Jesus is the Lord of Lords. So by that we understand that to worship is actually to bow. For Christians, worship is defined by the priority which we place to God and the God that is in our lives. The Bible says that God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship therefore is a matter of the heart expressed through the lifestyle that we live and holiness. Worship therefore is not just a matter of kneeling down, bowing down, praying, singing slow songs and lifting your hands up and pray. Yes, those are some of the actions that we do, uh, the gestures that we make and the actions that we do as part of our worship. But worship in itself is not just lifting up your hands, kneeling down, and then you say you've worshipped. Worship has to be done in the way that we live our lives. Worship cannot be forced. It has to come from within your heart. It has to come from the heart and then you need to constantly live it on your day-to-day -day basis. So what should you do in order to be a true worshipper? In order to be a true worshipper, you need to have something that is greater than you, something that is a greater power. In this world, we see people honoring queens and deities. And is it deities you say or deities? Deities. deities? deities, thank you very much. We see people honoring deities kings and queens so you have to have something that is or someone that is of a higher power than yourself before you can actually bow down before them to be able to worship them god is the one and the only one that is to be worshipped according to the bible if we see the book of philippians 3 verse 3 um, it tells us that God is the one that desires our worship. The book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 explains that no, nothing else should be worshipped. No prophets, no saints, no statues except God himself. In the beginning, in Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter 1, we see God created the universe, trees and waters and everything that is in, in the world that we see today in the universe. And at the end of it, God said everything was beautiful and it was good, but something was missing. So God created mankind and he gave them dominion to rule over everything that he had created in the world. And by that we see him creating you and me. We are more special to God than the angels are. He created us for his own pleasure. He created us that we should be able to honor him. He created us that we should be able to worship him. So why worship in the first place? Why should we worship? We worship because there are promises attached to worship. The Bible says that God wants us to worship him. 
God deserves all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. If you want to find the scriptures, it will be in the book of Revelations, chapter 4, verse 11. It clearly states that God is the only one that deserves all the honor and all the praise. Everything in the universe, including you, my sister, including me, including trees, should bow down before God and praise Him and lift Him up and give Him pleasure. So yes, God deserves all the honor. God deserves all our worship and adoration. When we lift Him up the way He wants, He will reward us with a promise. What is the promise? The promise is that when you worship God, He comes. I will show you how God comes when you worship him. God dwells in the presence and the praise and worship of his people. When you worship him, when you bow down before him, from your heart, not just with the physical being, but from your heart, God comes down with his unimaginable generosity. He comes down. The promise of worship that the God will come is not that when you worship God, that you feel all your burdens are lifted up, that you feel that all your, all your pain is gone, that you suddenly feel light. No, yes, that can happen when we worship, but the promise is, the main promise, and the main purpose when we worship is that God himself shows himself to us. When you worship him with your heart and this great submission, he comes. Just think of yourself as a human being. As we are today, if the Queen of England or the Queen of wherever you live decides to come and visit your house, what will happen? Things will happen. You will be the talk of the nation. People will talk about you. Something will change when the Queen enters your house. They could give, she could give you money. She could give you an upliftment. But whatever happens, you will never be the same again. The mere presence of that Queen or King in your house will change something in your life it will be a major change for you how much more our God when we honor him when we bow before him he comes and things happen I'll talk about the demon possessed man in the gatherings the man of the gatherings this is discussed in uh, the book of Mark chapter 5 when you have time at home read this okay I'll, I'll I normally focus on or oh, for this session, I will focus on verses 6 and 7. This man was bound spiritually. He was bound in chains. He was forsaken for many, many years. He was forgotten about. He was living among the tombs in the cemetery, a sign of him being buried already. Nobody cared about this man anymore. All they said was, he's a madman. He's a crazy man. He's demon possessed. Nobody, could, nobody thought there was hope for him anymore. But I'll tell you what happened. This man met with the greatest power of all, Jesus Christ. When he saw Jesus coming, when he saw Jesus coming, he in himself, including the demons that held him bound for so many years, they felt and they saw this greater power arriving. They felt and saw Jesus, the one in whom every knee should bow the one to whom every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. This one came, this king came, and this man saw him. And when he saw him, he bowed, he worshipped, he confessed, he bowed. Even the demons in him bowed. They have to bow when the king arrives, things happen. He shouted out and he said, Thou Son of the Most High. Those words is him acknowledging the power of the Most High in front of him. But nevertheless, he worshipped and watched. When he worshipped, Jesus came down with his anointing and he set this man free. Your worship must touch God's throne. When you worship, your worship should cause God to come down and things will happen. In the case of this man, he was set free. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. In the book of 1 Samuel, 10, 1 Samuel 1, verses 11 and verse 15, here we see Anna praying. 
Anna worshipped selflessly from her heart. Anna was this woman that was bitterly sad and broken because she was looking for a child for many years and she couldn't get this child. She was a woman who was humiliated beyond humiliation. But the Bible says she prayed. The Bible shows us in this chapter, she prayed, she worshiped God. She sub sub submissively worshiped God. She humbled herself and prayed from her heart. What happened was God again came. When you worship from your heart, things change because God comes. And we all know the story. She was given the desire of her heart. When you worship selflessly from the heart, your problems, demons have no choice but to give way. I'll talk about the 10 lepers before we finish. These men were outcasts. They were forsaken. They were kicked away from the place where they lived before, from the city. But what happened was they heard about Jesus. They heard about this great power, the greatest power of all. They bowed. They knew that the king was going to pass through and they knew they had to meet him. And when they saw him, they bowed. Again, something happened. When you meet the king, when you bow down before the king, something is bound to happen. These men were healed. They were set free. Their worship broke every barrier, every label that labeled them as lepers. Your worship, true worship, should break barriers and unleash your blessing. How to worship? The Bible declares that we should worship in the spirit and in truth. God is a spirit and all those that worship should do it in spirit and in truth. Find the scriptures in, in John chapter 4 verse 24. So what should you do in order to be a true worshiper? Simple. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Follow him. He knew you before you were created. He knew you and he loved you before you even sinned. He loved you and he forgave you. Live a life of sacrifice. Sacrifice your body as a living sacrifice, worthy and acceptable before God. Second point to be a good worshiper, you need to read the scriptures. You need to constantly read the word. Keep yourself watered. Keep yourself in the knowledge of the word. Another thing is you need to confess your sins. Your relationship with God is confession based. The Bible says we believe in the heart and we confess with our mouths. You believe, you confess. Try to live a life of holiness but constantly confess before this God. Whenever you've fallen, you need to confess. Last point. You need to focus on Jesus. Your worship should not be problem-based. Problem it's not how to worship Jesus. Eyes on Jesus. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom first. And then all the other things will be added unto you. So when you worship Jesus, a true worship will help the king to come to you. The king will come. And then everything else will will be added. I'll give you an example of the woman with the issue of blood. This woman worshipped from her heart. She was completely focused on touching heart. This was a woman who suffered for many years, not one year, not two years, 12 years. She was a woman who was humiliated again for years, but she saw Jesus. She heard the king passing through. She bowed. She said, I must touch the hem of his garment. Her focus was not on her problem. Her focus was on touching Jesus. Now, we may see her touching the garment of Jesus. We may see it's a physical thing, but I want to talk about the spiritual thing. Because when she touched Jesus, Jesus said he felt a power come out from him. 
when you touch Jesus from your heart, when you worship from your heart, you touch him. And when you touch him, a power comes from him. So the king gives you everything else to be added. This woman forgot all, humilia all humiliation, all sorrow, all pain. She humbled herself. Doctors gave up on her. But this day, she touched not just with her hand, but with her heart. The king came. Things changed. And this woman was rewarded. She was set free. So in conclusion, I want to encourage you today. I urge us today to know God, understand God as the ultimate power. Let's get to know him by reading the scriptures. Let's get to understand him, love him in order for us to be true worshipers. I want us to remember today that our worship should not be problem-based. It should be focused on Jesus. The king always comes when we worship him. It is a promise that he will come. And when he comes, things change. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. Worship him from your heart. That's how you become a true worshiper, from the heart. Not just with words, but from the heart. I hope you've enjoyed this. Until next time, be encouraged, be uplifted, and be blessed. Bye-bye. Thank you.